welcome back to my channel. I'm continuing my Eurovision 2020 tribute this week and today I'll be revealing my Eurovision 2020 top 15 songs. I have gone through this list and listened to all the songs at least five times, depending on the song, probably like 200 times, but I have made and remade this list up until literally starting to film this video. I hope this is as accurate to my current feelings as it can be, so, let's reveal the top 15 of Eurovision 2020, in my personal opinion. Number 15, North Macedonia, Vasil, with a song called You. I just wanna dance with you, tonight I wanna, I just wanna dance with you. This song reminds me very much of like mid-2000s, 2010s, kinda slow R&B when People like I just want to like dance to something quite sultry. It has quite a nice rhythm, quite a nice melody, and uh, the lyrics are just like you know I want to dance with you. I think it has quite a fun tone to it. It has a really good vibe to it. You want to just dance, dance to it, you know. <laughs> Next up, number fourteen, Norway, Ulrike with a song called Attention. So why, why do I think it's okay? Do not be me cause of you And what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? Do I your attention? This is a traditional Scandinavian power ballad that we've seen from Scandinavian countries on Eurovision for quite a few years. It's powerful but at the same time it's quite modern. She has amazing voice. It's so powerful, it really punches through you. It's a really interesting song, and obviously because of the title it reminds me of Charlie Puth, but not obviously in a bad way. I think it's one of those ballads that really stands out because what she says is kind of true. Why does she think it's okay not being her because of him? Like, who is he? Who is anyone in our lives to tell us how to not be us? Or not let us be our true selves? I think it's just such a beautiful message, and she's dressed in gold, she looks absolutely stunning, and I think that would have been quite a high-ranking song on the list. Number 13, Israel. I'm going to say Eden, I hope it's Eden. Eden Allen with Fekele B. Fekele B. Tonight is our story, we celebrate the glory, we have no shame, Fekele B. I'm not ashamed to love you, tonight I'm gonna find you and call your name, Fekele B, Fekele B, Fekele B. This is a very African inspired song. So this artist is actually from Ethiopia, so she included a lot of influences of that kind of African really colourful vibe and I think it really suits this song. It's such a standout in my opinion from this year. It's such a vibey song, you really want to dance to it, but she also has really really beautiful powerful vocals, so including that with a bit more of a street style, I think it really works for this song. And it's just really fun, you want to be like, you know, Fekele B. <laughs> Number 12, Italy, Diodato with Fa Rumore. Che fa rumore, qui, e non so se mi fa bene, se il tuo rumore mi conviene, fa ma rumore, sì, che non lo posso sopportare, che sto silenzio è naturale per me. This song really grew on me. At first I really didn't feel like it. It was obviously I'm sad that Soldi from last year by Mahmoud did not win, but also Arcade is... I love Arcade so much. Anyway, I have been on and off with loving Italian entries for Eurovision, so this one I either was gonna love or hate. <laughs> And I'm really surprised that it grew so much on me. I've listened to it quite a few times, and every time that I listened to it, the more I recognized what it was doing, and the more I was like, it's a solid song. It's such, such a beautiful song. I think the lyrics really add to it. The power and the pain that he's singing through his lyrics and his voice really comes through, and it's such an emotional song. You can see I'm a little bit tearing up right now, but I think I really appreciate that Italy is still one of those countries that most of the time they try to bring entries of the songs that are in their original language, which is fantastic. I love Italian language, I love Italy, so this song has really that 
just raw power. It has dropped on my list a little bit, but I think be only because there are some songs that I feel that will be reaching for more to listen to rather than this one, but it's still a fantastic, fantastic song. Number 11, Cypress, Sandra, with a song called Running. But I keep on running, I keep on running, I keep on running away. I keep on running, I keep on running, I keep on running away. This song, I think, I, th I like Cypress. Cypress brings out really, really fantastic songs year on, year out. And this really just spoke to me. It's very, like, not a maybe the most well designed song, if you know what I mean. Like, it doesn't maybe particularly have, particularly have a lot of meat on its bones, but in my opinion, that's where its beauty lies. The fact that he he addresses that he's fighting his demons, he keeps running away from himself, from him, his wants, his needs, while he should actually, you know, stop, pull back, and actually confront some of those. He doesn't want to feel sad, he doesn't want to feel those bad feelings. I think that's what a lot of people feel when they fall into depression or just from anxiety. I definitely know that I felt those feelings. And that, like, the drop after the chorus, like, keep in mind, like, dun, 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 dun. that's fantastic. I love that part. I just want to be like, mm. there's a lot of really awkward dancing in this video, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Also, I'll be linking all of these songs down below. I have made a playlist of my top 15, so you can browse them. i also leave all the playlists to all the Eurovision stuff that you need to know in the description. Number 10, Spain. Blas Canto Universo. Perdóname, perdóname, uni universo. Perdóname, perdóname, uni universo. This song, oh my goodness, I have been struggling with putting them in the right order between Cyprus, Spain and Italy. I think Italy was a bit higher than this song previously, but then I re-listened to Universo and there's something so beautiful about it. I think it's the similar hook to what Cyprus has, you know, with the keep on running and then there's like a musical part in between. I think it has a similar vibe to that, but I feel this is just a bit more lighter than Farumore for me, so that makes it just get up on my list a bit higher. I like Spanish language being sung. I used to study Spanish for two years. I have kept zero of that knowledge, <laughs> which is really sad. So as many of you remember, there's this Spanish-speaking singer, I'm not sure which country he's from, but Juanes. He used to sing Tengo la Camisa Negra and other songs, and his singing style and his, sing his music was really influential for me as a teenager. I really enjoyed it. So I think that reminds me a little bit of him. The structure of the song, maybe some sort of like lyrical punch that it has. I'm really happy to start my 10 out with Spain, especially. Number 9, Sweden, The Mamas, Move. There ain't no ocean, deep in the middle of fire, and there ain't no fire, that I would run right through. There ain't no mountain, baby, that I wouldn't move, nothing that I wouldn't do for you, cause you would do it for me too. are basically the gospel that we need in 2020. It be, they remind me of the Hercules goddesses that sang Hercules and Meg in the background of one of my favorite Disney songs. They're just so powerful, the voices are so beautiful, they are just so inspirational, the song is just everything that you want, it makes you happy, it makes you inspired to live your life and do things and achieve and go out there and be yourself because they're so beautiful these gorgeous women sing their heart out on stage and you just feel inspired and you want to take on the world and kick its butt number eight ireland the story of my life the story of my life it's mine i made it on my own that's right no say no 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 hey 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 my life is mine my life it's mine I love this song. I think every single song that has been on Eurovision since 2005 that has had life in the title, like my life, story of my life, has always been one of my favorites. I just can't get over the inspiration behind all these songs because maybe that's what I look for in my songs. I want the lyrics to make me feel like I can be more than 
I am or do more with my life than I am already doing. Me starting this YouTube channel, I would have never done this. I have been watching YouTube passively for so many years, but only now, recently, I had the courage to put myself out there and I think it's really, really important. So songs like this, even though people will be like looking at this song, so I think, oh, it's some, another Eurovision rubbish. It's not. It's beautiful. She has such a unique voice. She plays her own instruments. She's just a queen. I'm going to be following every single song that she's going to be posting from now on. I'm going to go back and listen to more of those. It is such a such a fun song as well. You just want to be like, na 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 na. But then. <laughs> Number seven, Bulgaria. Victoria with a song called Tears Getting Sober. Great, feel my head is taking over. Me, same deja vu today. And each time I'm getting colder. Hey, I should let it go, but your lies burn like sugar in my wounds. In time, would be a star. Does it sound like Billie Eilish? Yes. <laughs> Clearly she has been inspired by their singing style, that singing manner, song composition, but is that bad? I would say no. I think it's probably one of the most underrated, but also most beautiful songs on this Eurovision list. It's so short and so sweet and exactly what Billie Eilish's music sounds to me at least. I haven't listened to all of her songs, but one of her latest songs has that the same feeling to me and it's just so i think it's a really emotional and a great way to showcase a song where you really want to put your heart out and your feelings out and i think victoria did a great job it's one of those songs that i won't be like reaching out all the time for but i know that in my like maybe darker moments or my sad moments my brain will like you know look for it and find it and I'm almost sing it in my head, it's like, ah, ah, ah. the melody is just so beautiful, familiar, but also new. Number six, Germany, Ben Dolik, the violent thing. Don't tell your mama what you're doing tonight, 24 hours, no, 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 look in your eyes. I don't need your number, cause I know you'd be there, and if I got you with me tonight, one of the most controversial entries on my list. Why is Germany so high on my list? If I knew I would tell you. Do I know? I don't know, there's something about this song that really gets me. Is it his really like falsetto-y vocals? Is it there also the club vibe from like 2007? Is it all of it combined but also the idea of like someone being you know like she's a violent thing? I know calling women things is like so not 2020. But there's something so fun about this song, but also underappreciated. I feel like even if you are a Eurovision fan, I think it is really easy to overlook this entry. Germany has not had the greatest lineup of represented songs. Satellite was one of the like the most unique and also very simple songs. I feel like it has the same vibe. It's very simple. It has that club feeling that you really want to... I feel like all of the songs that I have on here are really like you want to dance to it with like a couple of exceptions. But there's something about this song that really gets me going. This was so much lower on the list previously, but the more I listen to it, I'm like... This needs to go ha on my list. <laughs> Number five. We're reaching our top five of 2020 Eurovision. <sighs> this probably sits usually a bit higher, but I couldn't put it any higher than this. Russia, Little Big. Uno. It's gonna take more than one margarita I'm gonna call you my sweet senorita I'm gonna leave after night and leave with ya All you have to do is to be ready for some action now You'll be a dummy dummy, I've got the yummy yummy You're just a dummy yummy, I don't the me name You'll be so yummy yummy, you're just a funny honey All you have to do is to be ready for some action now Is it a stupid song? Probably. <laughs> Do I love it so much? Yes. I am not really familiar with Little Big. I know they had a hit that was like a big TikTok dance or something viral, but I was never really a follower of that. And when they came out with this song, clearly I was curious. I wanted to find out. And I was so... <laughs> I love this song. 
Why do I love this song so much? Honestly, my top five are like the biggest highlight of this year. This is everything that Eurovision is, but also isn't. It's like, if you remember Berka Sudjuchka who represented Ukraine in 2007? Eight, nine, ten, one of those years. That song was just a bunch of nonsense, but it had the moves, it had the feeling. It's basically a recreation of that or inspired heavily by that. And I love this song so much. It is so silly, but also the video is brilliant and there's just no real substance to it. But it's the most genius thing you could have come up with. And I feel like only they could have pulled it off and they have. And if you, if you think that you're not gonna hear me th sing Una Una Dos Quatro for the rest of the year, I don't know, what do you think? Number four, Ukraine. Go A with a song called Solove. As you will find out eventually, I have a sort of a soft spot for Ukraine and I always stan all their songs that they release for Eurovision. This was no exception. I think this song in particular encompasses a lot of Ukrainian folk music sounds like and what it is. Essentially just a really gritty but powerful but also this has been really modernized for that modern sound and I think they did a great job. I was following the national selection for Ukraine, so I know that pretty much this was the only choice they had to go with, really, because everything else was quite mediocre, mostly because of the quality of singing and maybe the language level as well. So they obviously went for something ethno and spoken in Ukrainian. We haven't had many Ukrainian songs represented on the in the competition, so to see Go Away do this is fantastic. Obviously, really sad that they will not be able to present this song as an official entry in the competition, but I think this is a re revolutionary sound for Ethno. I know this sounds, and people will say, oh, but it sounds like this song from this year, this song from this year. Does it? Obviously, Ethno music from Eastern European countries has that vibe, but this song has taken it to another level, and you can't argue with that. So we have reached at my top three. So who is number three this year? It's Australia, Montan, Don't Break Me. But oh, ho, ho, I can take it anymore. Don't break me, don't break me down, 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 down. Don't break me, now hear me now, 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 now. You thought I was elastic, but maybe I'm This song is gorgeous. It is, is uh, I think my favorite Australian entry. I would probably have to like check on that, but it's it's just a song. If it wasn't on Eurovision, if I was able to find this, if this was ready to like you know showcase somewhere on Spotify, and I would have found it, this would have straight gone into my favorites folder, and I would have listened to it for months non-stop. This is how good this song is. It is so emotional. The lyrically, lyrically, this song is impeccable. The way she starts the song and the rhythmics of her words, I don't feel the same buzz when name comes up on my phone anymore. Oh, I'm not a musician, but I can feel when the music does something to me. Her lyrics just break me. That's how you feel sometimes. You just, oh, you think people, the people think that you can stretch and bend and they can fiddle with you and do whatever they want with you. But you tell them, what if actually I'm made of glass and you have to handle me a bit better? And if you mess it up, I'm gonna be broken. You know, have some real respect for people. I love this song so much. Montan is an incredible artist. This, this just 
it just breaks me it's so beautiful it just um by the way if i'm looking that way i'm looking at the lyrics and the songs because i'm like my brain is it's my top three because i want it to be higher but i can't put it higher because the other two are like but this is like it's gonna be it's so good australia does it again i know australia technically shouldn't be participating in eurovision i've heard that before but if they bring great songs on to the contest i'm not going to judge my number two switzerland john steers répond de moi i need to look at the lyrics for this one so bear with me So there is an artist called John and he decided to go as John's tears onto Eurovision. Let's start with that. This song has so much emotion in it. I think the first time I heard it, I almost cried. That's how hard it hit me on the inside. And obviously I don't speak French. I don't know French very well. I don't understand it. But when I looked up the translation, I was broken. It is almost like an anthem for, what do I say, depression or sadness again, but those kind of feelings of darkness where you're like, literal translation of the lyrics, why does death come after life? Why does, why do we sleep when half of my family is in another country? Why do we run without ever stopping? Why would you just keep doing these things? And what is the point? What is the meaning of life? And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> And he's asking, can you answer me? Can you give me the answers without any bullshit, without any kind of other interpretations? And I love this song. I love this song so much. This is my number two of this year. It hit me hard the first time it was released. It still hits me hard. I can't listen to it on repeat as much because it really starts breaking you from the inside. But also, have you heard his voice? It's phenomenal. I was also one of those people who were like, but can he do it live? And then he dropped a live performance of this and his high notes are unbelievable how easy he can get to them and <laughs> just so beautiful. It's a very important song, I think. It's very important that we listen to it. It's very important that we keep promoting it. It's, it's darkness and it's light and how monochromatic his video was. I think it would have blown everyone away if it was performed on a live big stage. So go and listen to it. Please go and give it love. And then here we are finally. Number one song of mine that I love for Eurovision 2020 is Lithuania, The Roop, with a song on fire. I'm a human not a stone, I can make a change and go. Wherever I want to They told me maybe I'm too old But this fire in my soul The heat is getting higher I feel that I'm on fire The world is my desire I feel that I'm on fire Is it the best song ever? Basically it is so good. It's so good. It's so good. I love this song so much. I love this song so much. Obviously, I try not to listen to the songs prior to their release or main presentation on the big stage in Eurovision. But you know, I was, I was curious. <laughs> I wanted to see what's happening because, you know, he looks cool in his little white turtleneck and like long trousers and I was like, you know, bald and stuff. I was like, yeah, let me, let me see, let me have a look. It stole my heart. I am basically heartless now because this piece of music is perfect. 
it's all being yourself and finding your passion, your fire inside you, despite what everyone else is thinking, despite your age, your sex, your race, your upbringing, whatever cards you've been dealt in in this life. You are you and you're the best you that you can be and you deserve to do what's best for you and to pursue your dreams. We only get one life. Try not to harm anyone else, try not to hurt anyone else, but try to do the best you can. And this song is just perfect. The, the dance moves, it was made for Eurovision, it was made for the group activity of just following this. It's so much fun, it is so fun and dark and modern and a bit like almost inspired by the 90s but also just like unique and in its own. It's my favorite song this year. It is very high on my all-time song list. I will be releasing that sometime in the year but also this leads me well into the next video that we'll be seeing on Tuesday from me and it is my Eurovision 2015 to 2019 Winners ranked, according to my taste, I'll figure out a better title for that, including 2020, my winner, which is the Roop. The Roop will be included on that list, even though as an honorable mention, but it will definitely have its own spot. I'm really proud of Lithuania. I think they've had a rough going. And if it was up to me, <laughs> probably it's never. But this year, if your vision was held, despite everything, I hope they would have won. Um, I would have, I wouldn't have bet, I don't like betting, but I would have put a lot of effort and my energy into be hoping that they would win. As long as the song makes you happy or evokes some sort of emotion, that's when you know that it's a good song. I know I haven't mentioned quite a few countries on it, there's at least 42 or 3 countries participating this year. This is my top 15, I had to really like cull them down but it was also kind of easy because there was a lot of that wasn't resonating with me personally. I know a lot of people like the Iceland entry or the UK or someone else. If you like those, please drop me a comment down below, let me know. Obviously these are my personal opinions. I am a bit of a Eurovision buff, sort of, not really. I just love Eurovision passionately for music. I wanted to share with you my choices and my kind of tastes. So from this you can kind of gauge my preferences on Eurovision. I think this concludes it for today. Look forward to Tuesday's video for the epic rundown of all the winners. And I'll see you in my next video. This is it for me now. Bye!